the popularity of the black pill has been skyrocketing over the past few years. And it's actually not that much of a surprise. More specifically, uh, a certain philosopher uh, basically predicted the black pill. The following clip you're about to watch was me being a guest on the Breaking Beta podcast, which is an excellent podcast, by the way. He has a lot of great guests and he's a great interviewer. And in this specific clip, we talk about the philosopher who predicted the black pill. The person who predicted the black pill before anybody was Friedrich Nietzsche. In the, uh, more specifically, he outlines almost like in a narrative style. Um, well, maybe not a narrative style, but he, well, yeah, kind of um, in the genealogy of morals. Right. So um, so basically one of the things he talks about, actually, this specific one, I think it was in Thus Spoke Zarathustra, but he talks about the last man and the last man is uh, the archetypal passive nihilist. So Nietzsche makes a distinction between a passive nihilist and an active nihilist. An active nihilist is basically somebody who, you know, doesn't necessarily think everything's pointless, but doesn't think that there's some central truth and tries to create his own value. So actually the idea of the Ubermensch is technically an active nihilist. And a passive nihilist is somebody who's just kind of accepted his fate and is just like fine with just the bare minimum doesn't have doesn't say yes to life right he just kind of like lets life happen to him and he's just kind of sitting there just like slowly like decaying over time and so Nietzsche predicted this back in the 1880s with the you know fall of Christianity and the rise of, of science um but he was also saying how like this is only going to get worse and it's it's because because the values so much have shifted compared to what has been the values for basically millennia with Christianity, um, there's going to be a lot of nihilism going around. And more specifically, that's that's happening now. So he has a distinction between uh, master morality and slave morality, which he also calls herd morality. So master morality is basically the, basically the idea that you just do whatever you want. So he, he creates this whole story arc almost of like the Romans. Um, they were the masters, right? They could do whatever the hell they wanted. And so they did. And that was automatically good is mostly like tied to strength and capability. And then he said that the, the Jewish people and then eventually the Christians basically created slave morality, which was to say, oh, well, we're going to paint what they call as good as evil and then us mm -hmm. be good as an extent or mm -hmm. uh, instead. And so basically, it's just a, it's a giant reactive cope to things that you wish you had, mm -hmm. but don't. And that's that uh, that fuels your envy, that fuels your resentment. And I think you can say that the similar thing is happening today where a lot of these guys, you know, they want to have uh, success with women. They want to hook up with girls, but they can't or they fail to uh, because of the birth control pill, because of the deregulated dating marketplace, whatever you want to call it. And so that inevitably makes them resentful and envious. And then eventually they give up and say, hey, what's the point? Right. So these people are very similar to the what Nietzsche called again, the last men because they start to um because because dating women is hard man dating women is hard the idea of the ubermensch is somebody who says yes to life both the good and the bad so much to the point where if if his life had to be replayed over and over again for eternity he would be like fuck yeah let's do that because life is awesome right and so most guys aren't aren't like that you know and um to to Put this even further if you're talking about who's causing the black pill honestly man i think it's also rollo tomasi i really do because you talk you see how the black pillars and i've debated quite a few of them um you see how they formulate their arguments their justifications for their nihilism they bring up charts and graphs of like the sexual marketplace smv all of these like rollo terms that you find in the rational mail a lot of yeah. these different guys Almost all black pillars have read the rational mail and they use that as a starting point. And then they just start to get more and more negative over time. And so Nietzsche also had this idea of in the genealogy of morals of what he called the priest, where basically the priest was somebody from the master class who uh, feeds poison to the herd in order for him to gain power. Right. 
and the it's it's a very key distinction that the this person from the master class this priest isn't part of the herd himself so rolo tomasi is not part of the herd he's not part of the dating sphere at all he, the last time he was dating i wasn't even born yet mm-hmm. so he's a married guy and he hasn't been in this space for 30 plus years or whatever but he uses his rhetoric to poison the minds of the herd which he's not even a part of in order to gain power so gain power cloud money so it's crazy man i mean don't take it from me just read nietzsche and you'll see exactly what rollo is and what's going on with the black bill and and just the idea of nihilism and how honestly as they're as men get weaker and weaker and stop trying to take personal responsibility and putting responsibility into their own hands and saying yes to life like that ubermensch mentality um there's going to be more and more nihilistic last men and unfortunately it's it's crazy seeing and it's really concerning seeing how much the black pill has exploded within the past like year or two and it's it's even just yeah the last two years i've noticed it yeah yeah Yeah. so a big part of what i'm trying to do is really just fight against that fight against that passive nihilism that that decay the uh you know the what nietzsche called the last men and german is called like a a thing's called (laughs) letztermensch so um yeah that's only going to get worse and you know a little bit of background on me as well i'm I'm half japanese i know i don't look it because i'm probably like the whitest asian person whitest looking asian of all time but (laughs) i was half i was half raised in japan fluent in language everything so japan it's pretty well known they have a basically a giant incel problem and basically it's a bunch of those let's their mentions in japan where they're just these passive nihilists is kind of like floating along through life and just coping and dealing rather than actually taking life in their own hands and and actually living life to the fullest so the more japan is almost kind of a warning sign of what's going to happen to the us and will happen and is going to happen which is basically that men and women stop interacting with each other and so much to the point where the birth rate is lower than the death rate mm. <laughs> so so japan in like 10,000 years is going to be like zero people technically so mm. i i see the same thing happening in the us and these unfortunately these these weak the the weak past the weak man who's a passive nihilist is become going to become more the norm than the exception and that's when societies crumble man so like the stuff that i talk about with the dating and the philosophy and stuff it's way deeper than just like oh how do i get laid you know if it was all yeah. like oh how do i get laid then i wouldn't be interested in it this is no yeah, i've that's... seen this happen in my in my home country of japan and it's it's only going to get worse and it's it's really bad honestly so we need people like us to just be like hey you know get your shit together if you look for a reason to complain about why the world sucks and everything you're gonna find it right Mm. so how about you actually have the mentality of trying to like take life by the balls and actually live life to the fullest no matter how scary whatever it is so Mm -hmm. i believe that studying nietzsche now is more important than ever especially with the cultural decadence that we have that has led to uh, the decay in values and ultimately into the era of the last men in a modern day context we would call them black pillars i mean the last men, the let's um, you know, they're basically the same exact thing as the guys who call themselves black pillars nowadays. Guys who, you know, sit at home, just live in comfort, don't take any risks, and then they just kind of decay over time, and it's really sad. So studying Nietzsche is now more important now than ever, but I understand that for most of you guys, you have lives to live, it's kind of tough for you to like study Nietzsche's works. You might just want the TLDR of it to get like his general ideas and stuff, especially within a modern context. So actually I'm working on a free book right now. Uh, I haven't decided what it's gonna be called. I'm thinking maybe it's gonna be called the Ubermensch Mindset or Ubermensch Mentality, but um, that book is actually gonna be for free, but it's going to lay out how to use the wisdom of people from the past, such as Nietzsche, to be able to live a great life in the present. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be coming out soon. As always, thanks so much for watching. See you next video.